Welcome back here, second day of Saturday's competition here at the 2014 National Collegiate Paintball Championships. I'm Maddie Marshall alongside Todd Martinez. And right now, we got ourselves an awesome matchup. It's about to go down. Florida Atlantic University Owls taking on Liberty University Flames. These two teams are favorites here, Todd. What do you think about this matchup? Well, I can't wait to see what's going to happen here based on what happened yesterday. Uh, Liberty ended up smashing ECU and looked really solid. They, you know, they won 12 to 5 after being down at halftime. They uh, held ECU to zero points in the second half. And then Florida Atlantic, you know, had that really uh, crazy first half, uh, you know, it was tied 4-4 four to four, and then played the entire second half to no point, which ended up uh, going to an overtime where uh, uh, FAU was able to beat Temple in that overtime match. So, uh, you know, not a whole lot of uh, paintball played so far uh, by FAU, but, you know, a team that's been here before and year after year, they're always a contender. So it's going to be a good game. So FAU will be on your left, Liberty. He's in the red, white, and blue jerseys on your right. So Liberty losing their snake player off the break. They fill a player out towards that side of the field. He had stopped in the back right by the start gate to shoot off the break. And then now he's almost to the snake. And FAU losing bodies over here on the snake side. Madrid and Lochner both getting shot off the snake side, but referee running in to check Liberty player on the Dorito side. Three bodies over there, one body over here. That's Thompson on the snake side, but he's doing a little gun surgery right now. But more FAU bodies walking off the field. That looks like all the rest of them as Liberty uh, comes out strong this very first point. And gonna go, uh, Noah Burns gonna go grab that flag. Todd making quick work of FAU. Uh, players dropping off the break and then you know, also players dropping out of their bunkers and uh, no penalties. Normally when you see that many, when you see a quick point like that, when that many bodies drop that fast, a lot of times it's because of a penalty. But no, man, Liberty is just on it here. You see FAU getting in the snake, getting taken out. And uh, you know, definitely Liberty has their on the break shots down as they just very well displayed right there at first point. Yeah, and you know, they did a, a really good job of that in the second half, you know, continuing on, you know, here this morning. And again, you know, these teams are playing for seeding in this afternoon's quarterfinal matchups. The teams that have already made in, Temple University, Kennesaw State, UCF, and UConn. So the five, six, seven, and eight seeds to be determined this morning in these matchups, the Cal State Long Beach 49ers with their win uh, this morning over Cornell have already secured themselves a spot into the quarterfinals. Yeah, so nine minutes and eight seconds to go. The score, one to zero. Awesome first point from Liberty. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back here. We got ourselves, uh, well, a good start for Liberty. Man, they're on the break. Shots were down that first point. So can they repeat here and start decimating FAU? Or will FAU get it back? Did love that game that FAU played yesterday when they beat Temple in overtime. Man, Travis Madrid, he played great for him. And then yeah. also, who was the player? Lochner. Lochner. Oh, yeah, Lochner had that amazing move in the snake to really kind of set the stage for Madrid to do what he did. So now Liberty using, losing their snake player off the break. Four players left alive for Liberty. Oh, but Travis Madrid gets shot. Going out to that back corner bunker on the snake side. Liberty knows that Madrid plays that spot. They know that's an important bunker back there because you can really control the snake from that spot. And Lochner tries to make his bump out. Thompson matches him up over here on the snake side for Liberty. FAU gets another body clean. We, I saw FAU do that a lot yesterday. They will run out to the Dorito side. Then uh, Nadoski will run all the way from the Dorito side, fill across to the snake side. Lochner gets into the 50 snake, but has some teammates dying behind him. He still has a player over in the Dorito side corner, but three bodies dead for FAU. Liberty still with a decent spread there in the 50 Dorito Thompson gets on his horse and jumps into uh, the, the mini race bunker, outset from the snake, looking to get a shot across the field in the Dorito side corner. Lochner recognizing 
where Thompson is. Sets up to shoot him on the outside. If Thompson is smart, he could just go trade out with Lochner. Yeah, but Todd down on the D side of the field. Liberty now past the 50-yard line. And uh, looks like, yeah, Lochner has got the information from his coach. And as soon as his back turns, the hammer is going to get dropped. So he spins around. That's going to be a major penalty. Got to be careful with those spins, man. The refs have been on that here. We talked about this after in the afternoon, Todd. You know, look, man, I understand it's a natural reaction to want to trade out with the guy that's going to come and shoot you. It's a reflex. That reflex often, though, is built in practices where you don't have hardcore refs. You're either refing each other, maybe the opposing team's refing you. But even when opposing team's refing you, they may not call. They're obviously not going to call penalty on that. They're just going to yell at you not to do it. But regardless, you really got to be careful with those spins, man. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Well, it, you know, it's a good job by uh, Coach Todd Hoagland down here. Um, I mean, Lochner knew he was there. Thompson set up for it. But as soon as the bodies started going down on the Dorito side for Liberty crossing the 50, then the FAU coach told Lochner what was going on. So Lochner just gave up his body to look across the field. When you only have one body on this side of the field and you're staring at a guy that's about 10 feet from you, you have to be concerned about that guy. Because Todd Hoagland just sat there, waited until Lochner turned his back, then was like, let's go, Thompson. Got up, off to the races. And you know, when you have your back all the way, facing the other way and then your coach starts yelling he's coming he's coming he's coming of course you're going to spin but by the time you hear it react you're already turning anyway <laughs> and when thompson bunkered him in the back he just continued his turn and then you know the, the instinct is just to shoot thompson as he goes running by him easy call for the referee yeah and the thing is todd you know what that particular play goes to show you is the one-two punch of how sides work in the game of paintball so Liberty passes past the 50-yard line on the D side of the field. Uh, FAU's coach tells the 50 snake player where he is. He then head checks over, realizes that that player needs to get dealt with because, well, oh my God, they're on our side of the field. But as soon as he turns his gun that way again, paintball is a game of angles. That's when the hammer gets dropped, uh, you know, from the other side. So, you know, that that's that was just textbook paintball right there from Liberty University. Very well executed. And that's why the score is now two to zero. Not only that, but FAU drawing that major, so really digging themselves a hole right now. Only gonna have to play with four bodies. They sent three of them towards the D side of the field. And it looks like they are able to keep all four players alive. So it's a good break for FAU. Best case scenario for them. And they also shot Liberty trying to get to the snake, Todd. They've actually been doing a real good job of shooting that player out of the snake. Yeah, Westifer, he's been going hard at it. You know, Liberty is a team that's gonna uh, take it, take it, take it, you know, and take the risk. But yeah, that's gonna open the door for Travis Madrid to get into the 50 snake over here and uh, start getting some shots across the field. I think he got one, uh, one body off of that small Dorito. So Liberty now down two bodies, but they still have the Dorito side corner, the Dorito side can. Here comes Thompson again out of the snake side corner, getting into the yellow zone of the snake. Uh, Travis Madrid has got help behind him. Uh, I believe that's uh, Nadoski back there in that snake side temple, but he's looking across the field as FAU loses another body far up on that Dorito side. So they have the Dorito side corner, the 50 snake and the snake temple, and still the player in the box. So Madrid stands up over the top and he's gonna duke it out with Thompson right here in Ooh. the snake. Oh yeah, it's all, look at this joust. Look at the snap shooting battle. Oh, and Thompson wins the snap shooting battle against Travis Madrid. So Travis Madrid, one of the stars from uh, FAU, getting taken out by Thompson. Liberty looking real good right now. That was, uh, that's a good kill for Liberty in the 50 snake. That really takes the thorn that was out was in the side. But then Thompson, he gets shot, little lob shot all the way cross field by FAU, keeping him in this point here. Yeah, I really don't like uh, playing that outside race bunker. As soon as Thompson owned the snake, he should have gone right around into the 50 and got that shot across the field on the Dorito side corner. Now the whole snake side of the field is open and Liberty loses another body that's Tippett uh, and he comes walking off. It's only, I would think, one body remaining and FAU is able to get their player out of the box. So, and he is gonna get ran down by the old boy Vogel. Down a, that Dorito side. Todd, what a big point for FAU. The Owls staying in this match. They even had a penalty to start out this point here. They were to fight through that penalty, get their body back. Really long points. Again, you know, 
FAU has played some of the lowest scoring games that we've seen out here. Playing uh, really smart paintball. Let's look at this replay here. This is that battle in the snake. Back and forth between Madrid and Thompson. Madrid on your left, he gets owned by Thompson. But then Thompson ended up getting shot cross field. And now you're looking at, there's Liberty. We're looking at from Liberty's side of the field here, on the D side battle. FAU just wrapped completely around, completely dominating. And as soon as you dominate a guy for that long, it just sets up the run through. So nice bunker move right there. Awesome job by FAU to score a point here. Five minutes and four seconds remain here in the first half. We're going to be right back after this. So, we got ourselves a close match here, Todd. One point separates these two teams. We've seen some long points, an evenly matched game right here. These teams fighting for their life in this tournament. Yeah, and both these teams right now, uh, you know, playing pretty solid. We see one penalty so far, but, you know, that one was an easy call for the referees to make. But, uh, you know, Florida Atlantic, they got, a, they got a couple penalties yesterday. Liberty, you know, same thing. That's what kind of got them off to a slow start. Uh, in the morning against ECU, besides ECU's dominant shooting on the break in that first half. But, you know, I think these teams match up pretty well. You know, and, uh, you know, we got a good game in front of us here. Well, both teams gonna be starting with five bodies, see if they can play clean. Penalties have played such a huge part in this tournament so far. Looks like Liberty's gonna be having a runner over here, and they send the runner all the way out to the back corner bunker on the snake side. It's a hard spot to make. They also send a player to the back corner bunker on the D side, he makes it clean. Five bodies alive for both teams. Much better field position for FAU, and he is going to go to work. And yeah. that's one kill so far from that spot. He's probably going to shoot the back guy as well on the D side. You've got to recognize that, man. You know, that you, you got to play those bunkers tight, Todd. And uh, it, it, the, this 50 stink is it's so many people are getting here off the break, and so many people are getting kills from here that if you're playing one of those back bunkers or those middle stand-up bunkers, uh, you really got to be careful, and you really got to tuck in. You can't play, uh, can't play too loose in those in those bunkers. No, not at all. I mean, and there he takes one in the pack. The second he looks inside, so now just two bodies left alive, both on the snake side for Liberty, as Lochner here in the 50 snake put pressure down the wire, but his teammates running down into the 50 Dorito on his opposite side of the field. So FAU with the bodies and the field position right now. Liberty gonna have to win some gun battles, but no, getting shot in the back and getting pulled off is number 25, Matthew Robbins. Nice job by Lochner to get in the snake, get some kills. That really opened things up for FAU right now. And uh, that means they're gonna tie it up. Travis Madrid alive in the back corner bunker. And it looks like Todd, all five players left alive for FAU in that point. Yeah, FAU can play some paintball. You know, Liberty came out. You know, check out this replay real quick. You know, there's Lochner, you know, closing this game out right there. Putting a little bit of extra on Matthew Robbins. But, you know, FAU, you know, those first couple games, uh, they lost Madrid on the break. And then, uh, you know, another body coming out here to the snake side. Uh, Liberty, that last game, they let... Uh, Lochner get in there as you see Lochner as he got in yeah crawled all the way to the 50 and then immediately went to work and Todd there you can see those shots cross field those are the shots that we're talking about those stand-up bunkers into the back bunkers that it's such an amazing angle from there that's why the teams are fighting so hard you know the field layouts that give you high risk high reward yeah it's tough uh, you know when everyone knows you're trying to get to the 50 snake to actually make it to that bunker but the way that this field is laid out it's it's definitely makeable it's worth the risk because because when you get there, it pays off big. It's like when you got a guy on second base and you get a single into the outfield and your third base coach is telling you to round home. You have to make that outfielder make a good throw home. You know, it's the same thing run to the snake. Even if they know you're going there, they still have to shoot you going there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tough shot, especially on this field. There are only certain spots where you have a direct lane uh, to the landing zone going into the snake. You know, teams like, I mean, I'll give uh, Cornell all the credit in the world, you know, for continuing to run there. You know, so there's different routes you can run 
to, to make it harder on that team uh, that's trying to shoot you going there. But, you know, just putting the pressure constantly, you're going to tie up a couple guns, you know, at least, you know, one gun. But, I mean, even if you can make that team think that you're going there and then pull up short, or run a different route, uh, you know, you put the pressure on the other team uh, to try and adjust to what you're trying to do. The more options that you have, the harder it is for the team to shoot you out. And there are a lot of options over here on the snake side. It's all, it's all about, it's all about choosing the right option at that given time because, you know, a lot of it, sometimes it does come down to chance. Yeah, you got to make that shot, but if you didn't have the game plan to put, you know, a player to actually shoot that lane, you're not going to have a chance to shoot him. So finally, it looks like Liberty is able to get into the snake clean. He's going to go all the way to that 50-yard line. It's Westifer, and then now Westifer starts chopping bodies up on that center in the D side of the field. So Apocalypse happens over on the D side for FAU. No one alive over there right now for them, which is really going to open the door here for Liberty. Westifer completely unabated here in the snake. Yeah, the FAU did a good job of shutting down Westifer those first couple points, but you're not going to hold him down all day. Westifer came to play out here today, and he is going to work right away, getting some kills. The body's dropping all over the place. Is FAU going to drop this point? And Westifer going to get up out of the snake and run and grab that flag. So, you know, this, if you're FAU, you know, there's no sitting and resting. You know, on that good win you had last time, Liberty's coming right back. And Liberty can expect the same thing from FAU next point. You know, you talk about matchups out here. And, you know, both these teams, you know, kind of play a similar style. There you see trying to make that bump up the Dorito side for FAU. It's not quite getting there. But, you know, both these teams match up pretty well. Um, they're both aggressive on the break, uh, good at shooting lanes, good at reading and reacting. You know, a lot of smart paintball players out here in the field right now. Todd, this is the game we wanted to see. You know, really close match right now. Uh, lead being taken by Liberty with two minutes and 30 seconds to go. But, you know, before this match, when we looked at the schedule, we were going through the game saying, man, I'm really looking forward to watching that uh, Florida Atlantic University and Liberty game because we really felt that these two, you know, these two teams you know, could be Liberty, could be Florida Atlantic. It really just depends on who executes out there. Yeah, I mean, and like we said, you know, FAU with that game they played yesterday against Temple, you know, a really exciting matchup. One point in the second half where nobody scored in that long one-on-one, -on -one. you know, wondering how that was going to affect them coming into today's play, but they're playing just like we expect them to play, looking to take risks, get out wide, running and gunning all over the place. But, you know, Liberty was one of my favorites coming in here just because of you know, how they were last year, having uh, a few players coming back that were contributors. And, uh, you know, they come in here, you know, they're, they're the big Liberty, <laughs> you know? They Liberty roll up in their up. giant bus. Everybody knows they they're got, here. They got a, a private training facility at their college. You know, you love the attitude that these guys bring. Nice, you know? some of the nicest guys out here. Absolutely. Well, and that's saying something, honestly, because that's I love coming to this event every year. It's such a great camaraderie between you know, all the college teams. Everyone's always so happy to come to this event. And yeah, it's teams like that that make it fun. Yeah. You know, I love I love the, the different personalities of the teams that we have out here. And hard, hard to the Dorito side for FAU, but getting shot going to the corner. Liberty doing a good job turning around out of the flag station and smoke down that Dorito corner, but FAU once again Getting number 23 straight back into the snake again. He's got to be and careful. His loader has uh, kind of <laughs> tilted to the side. You want to spin that thing around so it has the smallest profile possible. Right now presenting a little bit bigger target. But he doesn't want to waste the opportunity to get that shot cross field. So Lochner's just locked in, trying to drop that shot into the back corner bunker. Yeah. Just three players left alive for Liberty right now. So this is FAU's chance to tie it up. Good field position for them. They have the 40-yard line Dorito in the yellow portion of the field. Yeah, Aaron Thompson getting shot out of that snake side corner. Not going to be good for Liberty. They need him to get going as well as um, Westifer, you know, pulled up short that last point. Didn't get an opportunity to get into the snake and Lochner taking full advantage of it right now. Yeah, Lochner playing real solid over here on the snake side for FAU. Looks like they are going to tie it up. One body left to shoot out. Minute and 18 seconds left to go here in this first half. So still some time to take out the last guy. Looks like they do. So Lochner running a racket over here on the snake side. 
Liberty doing, or uh, FAU doing a great job of taking out some Liberty players on that D side as well. Very solid cross field effort for FAU here. And they are gonna hang it up with under a minute to play in this first half. You know, FAU uh, is doing a good job of shooting on the break over here, trying to, uh, you know, there's, there's Westifer as he pulled up short in that temple and gets shot from across the field. You know, if I'm Liberty, yeah, even though FAU it, it does a good job of shooting on the break, FAU's taking more risks over here on the snake side. Uh, yeah, Westifer got shot a few times early, but I'm gonna continue to send him as hard as I can over here to the snake. If it's not straight to the snake, then you can just go to the mini race uh, right behind the snake. So, I mean, if you got your horses, you know, you got to run them. You got to yeah. get them out there. Absolutely. Well, you know, the game is now tied up. 57 seconds to go here in this first half. Also, if you like these awesome NCPA shirts that we got on, we'll be rocking all day long. Uh, you can definitely go to ncpapaintball.com, pick one up for yourself. Apparently, Todd got three shirts. I only got two. I'm going to wear mine for the rest of the month. <sighs> That's fine, man. You, you can have day. more. There's apparently... Apparently, all the production guys got five each. Yeah. Nobody was going to tell you. It's not fair, man. It's not fair. I only got two. Whatever. I'm not a greedy man. I'll take two. That's fine with me. Well, they ran out of smediums. Did they have so, smediums? You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a personal thing. It's just like a size thing. Oh, okay. You know, like, they got, got a double, triple, extra large? Yeah. I got, for, from guns that yeah, you're rocking today? Yeah, you know, like. Or every day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what was available. You get so sensitive when I talk about your guns, Todd. Well, I mean, they're just so huge. I'm just surprised they fit in this tiny little screen. <laughs> that we're on over here. Yeah, so uh, what a great game we got going on here between these two teams. Uh, all tied up right now, and this is exactly what we thought we were gonna see. Evenly matched squads throwing down right now here at the 2014 National Collegiate Paintball Championships. Next up, we got the West Point Black Knights taking on the University of Akron Zips. That should be a good game too. And then the Fresno State Bulldogs taking on the Penn State University Nittany Lions. That's going to be a great game, too. I, I really can't wait to see that matchup. Both those teams look really strong in their wins yesterday. And there goes Westifer all the way to the snake. That's what you want to see from Liberty. Let's see if he's going to be able to get those kills right away. And he does. Gets one right in the middle, but gets shot in the loader and continues to play. And he is going to earn himself a major. That is what you cannot do. <laughs> yeah, but FAU is losing bodies too, Todd. I don't know if they're going to be able to score this point here, regardless of that penalty. Bodies are dropping, though, heavy for Liberty. I think there's just one player left alive. He's on the D side of the field, but he's been chalking up kills. So yeah. low body situation for these two teams. Under 20 seconds to play here in the first half. All tied up at three apiece. Travis Madrid still alive for FAU. Insert yeah. bunker in the gray portion of the field. And it looks like we got ourselves a one-on-one, -on -one, Todd. Yeah, we got a one-on-one, -on -one, but with six seconds left, this half's gonna end. Nobody's gonna get a point out here. Lochner may have had an opportunity, but he didn't realize that Westifer had gotten shot, gotten pulled, ran around to bunker him, and got torched. But, uh, you know, penalties happen. That game is still gonna end on a positive for FAU because they're gonna start the second half uh, playing five on four. And there's Lochner coming around, thinking there's a body there. There's not. He gets blown to bits. Everybody starts dying left and right. And, uh, you know, the point ends in a one-on-one -on -one with nobody scoring. So Yeah, but tough thing, tough break for Liberty, that uh, major penalty here in the snake. Uh, minute and 30 seconds still going to be left on that. That does carry on into the second half. So... We're going to be right back here with second half action between the Florida Atlantic University Owls and the Liberty University Flames of Annie Marshall with Todd Martinez. We'll be right back after this.
about to head into the second half action here. Second game of the day on Saturday's competition. Finding out who is going to prevail here at this tournament. Very close match right now. Tied up at three apiece, these two squads. These teams will now switch sides of the field. So Liberty will be on your left side of the screen and FAU will be on the right hand side. Now, how that kind of affects the action a little bit is, you know, these teams and these players out here, they are, you know, you have to be able to, to be ambidextrous with your gun. You have to be able to shoot left-handed and right-handed. However, as, even though if you can do that in your bunker, it's a skill, it takes a long time to master. So running out to the left side of the field, uh, when you're heading out, like let's say now uh, FAU, when they run out to the snake side, they're gonna be running and gunning left-handed out to these corners or with their gun in their left hand. And then on the flip side, Liberty is now gonna be going right-handed down the snake. So as much as it, it really, you'd hope that everyone had trained enough so that you can perfectly use both hands uh, at the same level. In reality, even for players that have played for a long time, that's not necessarily the case. You still feel a little bit more comfortable with one hand or the other. So it does come into play. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I swear down here in Florida, this is the hotbed of people that love shooting right-handed out the left-hand side of their bunker. Over here, we call it the Kentucky left-hander. You know, people just it's refuse. Not the Florida, it's not the Florida left-hander? <laughs> it could, might as well be by now. You know, people just love to not switch hands, always keep their gun in their right hand. You know, the, the majority of people out there, you know, are right-handed, so everybody's always, you know, always right-hand dominant. You know, the, the majority of people out here right-hand dominant, would rather play right-handed. You know, when we were young, you know, we drilled so much day after day after day with our left hands. I actually preferred to play left-handed against people that were right-handed because so naturally right-handed, you know, you do so many, so much work with your left hand, you want to play left -handed. Well, And when you're in a bunker, like if I'm gunfighting with my left hand directly at my mirrored bunker, the exact same bunker on the opposite side of the field, he's going to be right-handed. And I feel you on that. I would actually gu I'd rather gunfight left-handed than right-handed. Yeah. I don't know if form's just better because I worked on it. Yeah, no, that's totally what it is. Because yeah, you get better form. Oh, major penalty at the start of this point here uh, on FAU. So now they're going to have to play down a body here for the next two minutes. They lo they're losing more bodies. They still have two players left alive. Dykes is in the snake for them. Wow, you cannot give that penalty right back to Liberty. FAU could have been playing uh, with the advantage for some time, but now both going to be starting four on four here if nobody gets out of the box. But FAU in charge of this 50 snake here right now, but here comes Thompson again out of the corner. But Madrid is behind Dykes, uh, but Madrid is focused solely across the field. Dykes trying to protect himself right now, but Thompson's got his coach right next to him, talking to him, letting him know, you know, we saw this scenario last time. And again, Liberty pushing up that Dorito side and let's see if the player from FAU decides to work inside again. Madrid has bumped away from the snake now into the snake temple, put himself in a tough spot. Here comes Liberty. Todd, it's Lib Thompson's time to go, and Thompson comes yeah, Thompson, and trades out. Todd, but Liberty's about to get their guy out of the, out of the bunker or out of the uh, penalty box here real soon. Yeah, he does come out, but I think Madrid's going to be able to pick him up. No, Madrid misses a shot and then finally drops one in on him. So nice job by Madrid to finish off that point for Florida Atlantic University here. And that's gonna enable them to go up one point here against Liberty. That was a pretty chaotic point though. You had attacks on both sides of the field and uh, still a guy sitting in the box. And right now, Liberty needs to blow the horn, concede the point and keep time on that penalty there. Finally, they concede the point, but that's precious seconds, Todd, that could have stayed on that penalty for FAU. Yeah, poor execution right there. Um, you know, let's watch this replay. You can see the penalty happen. Yeah, so we're looking over the shoulders of FAU here. And you're going to see that penalty. Referees come in there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you see it every time. You see refs sprint in, multiple refs sprinting in on one guy. That's going to be a penalty. Yeah. And then here, snake battle. Thompson makes his move. He gets shot. Still alive in there was Madrid. So look at this. Here comes Thompson. And he's going to get shot right there. Yeah, that was poor execution on the part of Liberty right there. You know, if you're that Dorito player, you, know, you don't have your coach next to you, but you got to know you cannot throw your body away. You know, you got to be aware of the clock. 
You have to know the situation, how many guys you have, where the bodies are. Well, because he was about to get the guy out of the box for uh, for his team, that would have added a lot of firepower for him at that particular junction in the game because then he would have had a back player shoot him, help him control a player in front of him. If he just stayed alive, Thompson comes and trades out, his player comes out of the box, it's a two-on-one. Yeah. You know, they execute it fast, get, uh, get Madrid out of there, and uh, FAU still has their body in the box. Instead, Madrid gets the kill across the field, stays alive, uh, shoots, um, I believe that was Westifer, uh, not on the fill, which Westifer could have taken a better route coming out of that box as well, but as he wrapped around the outside of the snake corner, gets shot in the head, and, I mean, tough break right there for Liberty, but, you know. Hey, it's still close, lots of game left. Yeah, Eight minutes and four seconds left here in the second half of this match. These teams fighting to move on here in this tournament. Four to three is the score. It's still anyone's game at this point. Yeah, and more clutch play by Travis Madrid. Yeah, you know, he always seems to be the last guy out there for FAU. Well, he's been clutch for a couple of years now, and you know he had an entire year. I mean, last year he played great, and uh, <clears throat> you know so he just had an entire year to hone his skills down here in Florida, which is a big, huge hotbed of paintball. Some of the best teams in the world come out of Florida and have for years. So these these uh, divisional players, these younger guys trying to make their way in the paintball world. If you're from Florida, it's a great place to be, man. Good weather, you can play year round. And you got lots of good competition to play against, and you're only as good as the players that you play against on a regular basis. Yeah. So now West are able to get in the snake again here for Liberty, and uh, he's in a really good field position. Can he win his gunfight against Travis Madrid? Try to wrap around and get those shots cross field. You know, such awesome shots cross field from the spot that Westifer's in right now here in the snake. Does peel one off right now for FAU. Yeah, Westifer uh, doing a good job of recognizing when that player came out of the box, he went straight to the can. You know, coming out of that box, you know, you can be smart coming out of the box too. I mean, you can see through the box. You know where the bodies are. You can listen to the calls as uh, Westifer puts a ball straight in Madrid's goggles. Uh, just one body left alive for FAU as Westifer has Thompson or uh, Liberty has Thompson and Westford over here in the snake. Two bodies over there on the Dorito side. Yeah, here comes the feeding frenzy. Four bodies converge, or two converge for sure. Double bunkering out the last player. And that's gonna do it here at this point for Florida Atlantic and Westford, nice job here in the snake. Thompson backing him up, but pretty, pretty much everyone that played the point right now for Liberty was contributing. That flag is gonna get grabbed and walked in. Six minutes and 30 seconds remain. And we're gonna have ourselves a tie game, a back and forth battle here, Todd. Yeah, and you know, we saw Liberty have two players go charging down the field. Yeah, there's only one body left, as you see Westifer on your screen right there, getting those kills out of that Dorito side can. Uh, and then here's the end game. You see those two bodies running down the field. I understand both guys wanna go bunker the guy, but that is the situation where you end up with a good player in that Dorito side corner yeah. who comes out, snap shoots one guy, snap shoots the other guy, uh, ends up in a two-on-one, shoots the guy in front of him. Next thing you know, you're in a one-on-one. -on -one. The dude's super hyped up because he just shot a ton of dudes. I feel like you've been in this situation before, <laughs> Matty. <laughs> you know? Absolutely, I, that's how I've made my career, man. Yeah, I love when that happens. Uh, didn't happen, unfortunately, for them, but that's what's possible. You gotta be careful in those high body situations, you know, slow, methodical in those situations. So, but hey, man, we got ourselves a tie game. Six minutes, 27 seconds remain. Stick around, we'll be right back after this. Being confident on the field is key in being successful. Every snapshot, every lane, every gun battle, it all matters. Having equipment that allows me to play confident the best of my abilities is huge. The spacing and texture of the Vanquish grips are ideal for handling in every situation. It's a soft shooting, hit every shot you take kind of marker. My name is Drew Templeton, I play for Team Infamous, and the Vanquish takes my game to another level. So we've had ourselves an awesome match so far. It's tied up at four apiece. These evenly matched teams throwing down here for the right to continue to play in this tournament. We will find out at the end of this weekend who the best college paintball team in America is. Right now, Florida Atlantic University tied up here with Liberty. Liberty, the left-hand portion of your screen. Florida Atlantic on the right. And you know, already in this match, Todd, we've seen awesome plays down the D side. We've seen great off-the-break shots. So who is going to execute here to help their team win this match? So on the breakout, Liberty heavy guns. They do send a runner to the snake. It's Westifer again. 
And then all the Florida Atlantic beats Liberty to the snake. Looks like Westifer is clean. So it's Lochner and Westifer here in the snake and look for Lochner to make his move. Oh, awesome job by Lochner. Take it out, Westifer, and it looks like Lochner might have stayed alive. I think he got shot cross field, though, as he was trying to get in to the yellow zone for Liberty. Liberty losing more bodies, so now it looks like just one player left alive on the Dorito side of the field, back corner bunker in the gray zone. And here comes Travis Madrid and the rest of the crew from FAU. And they're gonna make short work of him. Let's see if they can actually get that last kill. It goes low around down the sideline. Portion of that bunker, nice work. Nice work on the snake side, nice work on the D side right now for Florida Atlantic, cross field effort. As, no, as uh, Vogel gonna run and grab that flag from deep on the Dorito side. Looks like Eric Noguera made that last run down the Dorito side for FAU. And there's Madrid right there at the end of the game, just putting the pressure across the field as his Dorito side came running down. I think that's Noguera right there coming in for the closeout. So, yeah, there it is from the overhead view. Get to witness a mugging live in that Dorito side corner of Liberty. So this second half is uh, slowly drawing to a close still. Five minutes and 27 seconds right now. FAU with the advantage. Five to four is the score. We'll be right back after this. So here we go. Can Liberty summon enough to take down FAU right now? They're down only one point in this back and forth battle. It's still anyone's game at this point, Todd, I think, man. There's still some time. I know we've seen some slower points here. This is one of the lower scoring games that we've seen. Uh, but with five minutes and 27 seconds left on this field layout, very aggressive field layout. And uh, I mean, it's still anyone's game at this point. Yeah, I mean, one point back and forth. You know, both these teams fighting tooth and nail right now. You know, the breakouts have been huge right there. Last time we saw Westifer get into the snake right away, but then turn his back. That's the same thing that happened yesterday in the game against Temple. Uh, Temple player dives into the snake, turns his back, uh, turns his back to Lochner, and Lochner just took advantage of it right away. So we'll see how they come on the breakout again. There goes Lochner all the way to the snake. Dive into snake one, jump, and straight on into the 50. I think it's really hurting Liberty by letting Lochner get in here. Lochner knows what to do. As soon as he gets in, turns and dusts that corner, <laughs> both the whole Dorito side, pretty much. Yeah, it's going to be a little late by the time Liberty gets in there. Lochner just stands up and smokes him to bits. Lochner playing Nathan real. Hawkins. Yeah, he's playing real good on this uh, snake side right now. Definitely wants this victory. So Liberty walking off in droves right now. Just two players left alive for them. They're both here on the snake side. They're looking at Lochner. So Lochner's got to stay alive, stay tight. Oh, he gets shot out of there. So that's not going to help FAU's efforts here. He did his work already. So, uh, you know, we talked all day yesterday about the twos and the threes, the mid player and the back player, and they need to how they have to play off their front player's moves. And so right now, FAU's back player kind of stuck all the way back corner bunker on the snake side. He has a mirror, uh, which means there's a bunker or uh, the person there's there's an opponent in his similar bunker on the opposite side of the field. And it looks like, oh, Liberty dying out of their bunker, so one player left alive. Yeah, Liberty just letting FAU take it to them right now. They're trying to get to their spots, be alive, shoot players out, but that's not the way that they're going to win this game. They're oh, going to win. But look, Todd, FAU's losing bodies on the D side. Oh, they lose man. one body, two bodies. No, they lost one. So right now it's a two-on-one -on -one situation here. FAU still with a one-body advantage, but they, gotta, they have to push smart. You can't just run. You can't just be sloppy with a high body situation. That's how you allow the team to get back, get a couple free kills, and then uh, even up the body count. But no, FAU takes out the last player for Liberty, so he got it one, but not able to get any more than that. So Vogel and... Uh, and if you're Liberty right now, it's Vogel and Crumple. If you're Liberty right now, you need to blow that horn and end this game and save the time, because there's only three minutes and 35 seconds left. I think they just did. They need as much time as they can to get back in this game. And like I said, man, 
Liberty, they need to start attacking FAU. In the very beginning of this game, they came out and uh, shot potties on the break and attacked down the field. Right now, they're just trying to get to their spots and do what they can to stay alive. Yeah, so you're looking here on the replay. Last player left alive right now for Liberty and couldn't just couldn't get small enough. Looking at it from the opposite angle here. Yeah, see, there, Todd, that's what you're talking about. Right-handed at the left-hand side of the bunker right there. And is that how he got shot? Yep. Oh, weird. So you saw there in that replay when we were talking earlier about left and right-handed. Now, I will give him this. When you are the last player left alive... Sometimes you, it's faster. Yeah, exactly. So when you're the last player left alive, but you have to be crisp with it, very fast, fluid. You can't spend time out the left-hand side because that gives the whole shoulder, that side of your head, and the hopper because you have to you know, lean that hopper over, it gives you a big profile to shoot. So if you're going right-handed and you want to flip your gun back real quick to get a couple shots, head check, and then come back, but it's better actually to head check first and if you see a shot, make the shot come back on the lane. That's the proper form. If you're going to do that, uh, it is faster and you can get some kills that way and, and prevail in those low body situations, but it's something you got to be thinking about if you're just kind of sloppily looking with your gun and, and it's you got to be crisp and to have any chance in those situations. It's the only way you can prevail when it's three on one. You know what I like to do? What? Do drills ahead of time so I'm really fast at switching hands. <laughs> yes. So I can switch my left hand real quick, shoot somebody, switch back, shoot the other guy. Well, it's all it about practice, man. It's all about putting in the time ahead of time, you know, being prepared. You know, I think if, if you're just going to run the floor to left hander, uh, I, I think it's just lazy. I think it's bad fundamentals, and I don't like it. Well, and also, when you do practice anybody out there trying to get better at the game, uh, you know, it, yes, practice like you want to play it, so you don't want to practice fast, but practice the form first. Speed comes with proficiency. So the more you know the form, the, the faster you naturally will be able to do it and do it properly. So here we go on the breakout. Here, three minutes and 22 seconds to go. Down two points. Liberty trying to get back in this match. They don't send anybody to the snake side. Right now, they have four bodies alive. They are from the center all the way over to the Dorito side of the field. On the flip side, FAU has spread the field nicely. They have a player in snake one, and with that two-point lead in just three minutes remaining, he's locked up cross field, trying to stop the push up the center, but he head checks towards the snake side, which allows Thompson to get up in the center. So now Thompson has the drop on Dykes, and then Thompson takes out Dykes. So Dykes dropped the ball there. He had that lane shut down, but he head checked kind of you know, a, a slow head check towards the snake. And as soon as he did that, Thompson saw that the lane was open and he was able to make that move up there. Nice job by Thompson and the rest of the crew. Uh, very well done. But, you know, Todd, that goes down to, you know, as a coach, when, I, when you see that, um, it's like, look, kid, your job was to get into snake one and watch the center. They have to go for that flag. We're down low here. We don't want them to score a quick one because now the situation is it's going to be six to five with two minutes and 22 seconds. So two minutes and 22 seconds is tons of time here. So let's see. Love to see a replay of uh, Dykes dropping that lane. So there we go. It was FAU, yeah, trying to get shot on the snake side of the, or on the D side of the field. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, Todd, as a coach, I mean, you coach a lot of teams. I've coached teams over the years. When you make a game plan, look, we're up to. Get into snake one, watch the center. They got to run for the flag, and uh, we've got your back, so don't worry about getting bunkered. You're in snake one. It's pretty far. It's going to take a long run to get to you. Your job is to get in there and lock down that center. But you see, he got a little antsy, decided to head check down the snake side needlessly, and as soon as he did that, bam, Thompson makes that move. Then he gets the shot on Dykes. Bam, all of a sudden, we got ourselves a one-point match with two minutes and 22 seconds to go. We'll be right back. Let's see if Liberty can continue this comeback. So the stage is set for a Liberty comeback. Can they do it though? They do have enough time. Two minutes and 22 seconds is definitely enough time uh, to score a point on this layout to tie it up, take it to another sudden death overtime. We'll see. Now on the flip side, FAU, they still got the lead. So all they have to do is just live for two minutes and 22 seconds and they will take the victory here. And it will be another one point victory. We saw them play a close game yesterday, Todd. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna, they're gonna be able to do that here because Liberty is gonna come charging down the field again. I can feel it. 
They're lining up three bodies over here. Maybe not. Looks like Thompson's lining up to go out to the uh, snake corner again. There goes Westerfer diving all the way to the snake. Looked like he took one. Yep, got one right in the front of the loader. He comes walking off, and Thompson makes a quick move into the snake or uh, into the mini race behind the snake. FAU continuing to make that move across from the Dorito side to the snake side, but they lose one body uh, coming across. Uh, that's Lochner who's been doing tons of damage. Thompson up on his feet in snake one with the snake side of the field to himself. Only body on the snake side for FAU oh, is in that temple. Time ticking off though, minute 45 left to play here. Liberty is going to have to push forward. They are losing right now. So it's on them to put, to hang that flag up to tie this game. All FAU has to do is just stay alive in their bunkers. Three players left the life for them. They're all just zoned up. You know, at this point, hey man, bring your, your entrenching tools, dig a hole, and just cross it up. Crossing it up is one player shoots in front of another player. They watch each other's backs. Oh, and Vogel just left the corner and got into that Dorito side can. If Thompson comes up, he can get a shot in on Vogel, but Vogel getting checked right now. Vogel got bounced as he made that bump across. Todd, All how? Thompson has to do is pop up and shoot Vogel. And how is Liberty's University's coach not telling him about that shot? But it looks, I think he did finally get that shot. But with just a minute and six seconds remain, uh, I don't know if Liberty's gonna have enough time because they have a player left alive on that D side, but he's all the way in the back. Uh, so he's not in position really to do much out of there than maybe long ball somebody. It's all up to Thompson right now. But uh, Thompson's, not, you know, if I was the uh, player for uh, FAU on that D side of the field, I'd just hide right now knowing, okay, well, the, I'm not gonna get bunkered guys all the way in the back corner bunker. And it's gonna take him some time and he has to go into uh, uh, FAU's gun over here on the snake side. So Liberty, I don't know if they have enough time, Todd. They are starting to close the gap. Let's see if Thompson launches here. No one's shot at him from the D side for a while. So he could launch right now. He definitely could launch, but FAU's coach is right there. Yeah, it's a two on two. The Liberty pushing up into the 50 Dorito. Here comes Thompson, he's gonna launch. FAU player slow to react. It's gonna be a referee call. He's gonna call it simultaneous. It should be, oh, it no, was. No, but Liberty drops the ball on the D side, gets shot out. So and if you're that, Liberty, oh, not enough time. 10 seconds left. Yeah, that's gonna do it, so. Oh, and Travis Madrid, go weird, figure. Yeah, weird, strange. Travis Madrid switches sides of the field, goes to play the D side, and strangely enough, he's the one that uh, grabs the flag and hangs it, so constant clutch play by Travis Madrid, always alive at the end of the game, always there for his team, and uh, another solid performance by him and the rest of the crew from FAU. Did a great job over here uh, on the snake side pretty much all game, so. Here's that run through by Thompson there at the end. Very late to react uh, against FAU, but I mean, the, the call was made, and there's Travis Madrid getting the shot on the advance into the 50 Dorito right into the goggles, leaving just Madrid by himself as the referee called the simultaneous. Uh, oh man, even if even if Thompson had gotten the FAU player clean in that mini race, would he have even had time to deal with Madrid and or go get the flag? Probably not, would have been tough, but Thompson was all the way behind Madrid. Uh, but wow, hey, I mean, least, tough two on two right there. That was a very tough two on two. Liberty did do a good job of slowly but surely making their way up on the D side. He ended up losing his battle to Travis Madrid, but he did the work required to at least put himself in a position to win the game, and, or sorry, to win the point and thus force it to sudden death overtime. But unfortunately for him, it was Travis Madrid over there. So Travis Madrid doing a solid job again for FAU. They take the victory here. And we're gonna be right back with the West Point Black Knights taking on the University of Akron Zips. We'll see you in just a few moments. <laughs> 